The Elite Book 600 series is trying to open up the brand for more consumers, with the 640G9 being a fantastic and portable laptop. Now, we have the bigger 15.6-inch member of the family, the Elite Book 650G9, which brings the same hardware but in a larger chassis, so it will be interesting to see how it performs. On the outside, we see a standard business-inspired design, with a silver finish, sharp edges, and rounded corners. The laptop is made from aluminum, which improves the durability by a decent amount, but there's still some flex when we twist the lid or press on the base. The Elite Book is quite portable, with a weight of just 1.74 kilograms and a profile of 19.9 millimeters. The lid opens easily with one hand, showing off thin bezels on all four sides. The top one has an HD webcam, but you can get a full HD model with an IR sensor for face recognition. The base comes with a fingerprint reader below and a speaker grill above the keyboard. The board itself is very good, with a backlight and spill resistance. Typing feels great, as the key travel is long and the feedback is clicky. The touchpad sways a bit to the left, however, its surface is really smooth and the tracking is quite clicky. Going to the sides, the input-output shows good coverage. The left side has a LAN port, one full-sized 5 gigabit USB port, and an optional smart card reader. On the other side, we have the power plug, one Thunderbolt 4 port, two more full-sized 5 gigabit USB ports, an HDMI 2.0 port, an audio jack, and an optional SIM card tray. The display selection includes a 1366-768p TN panel or a full HD IPS panel. We tested the FHD option, which is okay for daily use and office work, however, with only 51% sRGB coverage, professional color-related work is out of the question. However, the laptop isn't targeting designers or creators, so we think the display is suitable, with no PWM usage. Since the laptop is suited for the office, we'll link our office work profile, which improves clarity when looking at pieces of text or tables. There's definitely more space for a larger battery pack, but HP thinks it's okay to offer a 42.75 Watt hours unit. It lasts for 9 hours and 15 minutes of web browsing, or 7 hours and 17 minutes of video playback. Only 2 per 100 people watching this video are subscribers. If you decide to just start following us, we'll be able to reinvest more in our laboratory thus making even more helpful videos for you. Thank you, you're awesome. These results are accomplished with the Core i5-1235U, which doesn't perform as well as we would want. The Dell Latitude 153530 does a lot better in 3D rendering with the same CPU, but the Elite Book is still a bit quicker in Photoshop. There are other CPU options available, including 2P-series chips. The device uses one heat pipe and one fan, which is enough for a 15-watt CPU. We see very high clock speeds and up to 45 watts in the first few seconds of our test, which is more than enough for basic work and quicker tasks. In the long run, the CPU settles at 24 watts, so we are pretty happy. Temperatures do get high, but they can't really be felt on the outside, as the base reaches only 35 degrees Celsius. Noise isn't an issue as well. Since this is a larger laptop, it has space for two SODIMM slots for up to 64 GB of DDR4 memory in total and two M.2 slots, both of which can fit generation for SSDs. We have a separate teardown video, which shows how to upgrade the HP EliteBook 650G9. We'll leave a link in the video description. The EliteBook 650G9 is a great business device with a solid chassis and good upgradability. The short load performance is good as well, so you'll have a snappy experience when using it. All in all, it might sweep the rug under the ProBook series, so HP should be pretty careful with pricing and how they position the series in their hierarchy. For more info about the EliteBook 650G9, 
you can go over our written review which shows even more tests.